Hello my soccer universe. And yes, this is now my La Liga Liga Nosh, there's, there's Benfica. I just uh, realized I maybe should also put a few Portugal jerseys on there because you know at the moment it's all more Spanish. Will happen the next time maybe even within this video. I decided to wear Valencia because in La Liga on Tuesday Valencia actually got a rare win over Valladolid where, um, you know, the game was rather even, maybe Valladolid did a little bit better, but Gomez gives them uh, the lead, makes it 1-0. Right after the half, uh, Garcia equals for Valladolid and uh, Valencia gets a very, very late win uh, thanks to Lee Kangin, a uh, Korean um, youngster who are really into the short net, really nice shot there. Uh, but in a way, the more interesting game was uh, the clash between Celta and Atletico Madrid. Um, Morat in the first minute puts the ball in, in, in the internet for a rare goal and it really seemed like uh, Atletico Madrid is gonna ride that lead home in typical Atleti fashion. But just uh, after the half, um, Mendes assist and Beltran with a wonderful shot. Whether he intended it or not, I mean, out of the air, just touching it, it uh, goes like in a parabola in the internet. That's a wonderful goal and that's how the game ends in a 1-1. One -one. Then on Wednesday evening, we had a rather interesting uh, clash for the Europa League between Getafe and Villarreal, where I saw a little bit of the first half at the end, and it was rather bleh, not all that great. So I decided to stay fully with Serie A, but I watched highlights, and the second half actually lifted a little bit up. First, the uh, penalty was given for uh, Villarreal, where Casola uh, steps up in the 66th and finally makes it 1-0 for Villarreal. Villarreal had the bet of the chances. Um, get off and more or less hang, 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 hang back and defending and yeah, I the last style of soccer. However, uh, in the 80th minute with their first shot on goal, Duro, nice cross by Portillo, um, makes it 1-1 and kind of this could have dealt a huge blow to uh, everything that VRL was doing, but uh, credit to them, they come back and they get another slightly contentious penalty uh, that Cathola again converts and makes it 2-1 in the 86th. And then uh, in stoppage time, Pena gets actually a goal from uh, open play uh, and Ibarra gets sent off, but um, he was not on the pitch as well. So 3-1 for Villarreal, which we will see is a very important uh, result for them in the races for the Europa League. And I'm also happy for Villarreal because they're getting back on track and especially since they will, uh, they are one of the few teams that probably can stop uh, Real Madrid. So maybe them getting in good form and giving us a little bit of a title race might work. Um, also with Real Betis uh, beating Osasuna 3-0 and then the Barcelona derby. I would have changed for that derby if Barcelona would have been, been playing better. I saw the, as again, the end of the first half. And yeah, what you would expect. Espanyol hanging deep, hanging deep, five at the back, then I think four ahead, ahead of them. Really giving Barcelona trouble because that's what we saw. If Barcelona, it doesn't have space, they have trouble. And it was the same dreary Barcelona. Pass, 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 pass. And in addition, Espanyol actually counterattacking uh, a few times quite well and interestingly. Uh, and so the best chance that I say was actually when uh, Ter Stegen saved from Longley from own goal and then in the, not necessarily the, re, the, the rebound, but the right immediately from that safe, um, Espanyol hit the outside of the post. So there could have well been a goal scored and something needed to, to be done. And um, coach brings on Ansu Fati for Nelson Semedo, but Ansu Fati is four minutes on the field and uh, is getting himself sent off. Uh, for a rough tackle, it was first a yellow, uh, they reviewed it and made it a red. I have to say, so and so. Uh, I think it was a rather harsh red card, but if um, the ref looks at it, okay. Uh, good thing for Barcelona is that Lozano makes an even worse tackle. Again, yellow card, they look at it and on replay. It's a red card, Girard Piquet, uh, absolutely well deserved. And then with that, 
Suarez suddenly finds the breakthrough, makes it 1-0 for Barcelona and that ends the game, there's nothing more coming. Espanyol of course tries, has some half chances, but Barcelona hangs on to the win, which was necessary for them. And so Espanyol goes down for the first time I think in 24 years, which also means, and that was a reason if you watched how I read it to my studio, that, that video, I took down the Espanyol scarves. This is one of my favorite scarves, Espanyol going down, not part of La Liga uh, at the moment or any, any anymore. I really hope they come back because Espanyol is one of those teams that actually should be in La Liga. But yeah, uh, after a great see last season where I was really excited about them, they completely tanked that one. Okay, to continue round 35 of uh, the La Liga season and yeah, I'm wearing the black Real Madrid. It's the classiest Real Madrid jersey I have, although this one is really nice. We had three, uh, two games on th uh, three games on Thursday and two games on Friday. Um, Eibar Leganes ended nil nil. Mallorca gets a win over Levante. Might be too little, too late. The big one though was Athletic Bilbao against Sevilla, which I found very interesting that Sevilla was playing in blue. It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look Sevilla. This is Sevilla, Sevilla in red. Uh, Kappa actually gave Atletic uh, a good lead and Atletic was largely the better team all around. Uh, but in the second half, Eva Banega uh, equalizes and then just five minutes later, Munayir El Dadadi gets the win for Sevilla. Yes, there were some chances that uh, Bilbao could have had to maybe get an equalizer, where it would have all even been deserved all overall, but Sevilla hangs on for a 2-1 win, which is huge for them because that basically seals their Champions League ambitions. Then uh, the other Basque team. I mean, the Basque teams are not all the great since the real Urissa Drassos is out, played wonderfully. They just met a super, super, super efficient Granada. <laughs> and I realize it's Basque country against Andalusia in both uh, games. Uh, Granada twice shoots on goal in the first half, Puertas and Soldado. And they will lead to nil, although Arasas that hit twice the woodwork. Arasas that comes back though in the second half. Merino in the 47th gets the equalizer. Attack after attack. Oyasabal gets not the equalizer. Merino. Oyasabal gets the e equalizer. And you think maybe they can turn it around? No. Duarte with the header, which is the third shot on goal for Granada, gets the win for Granada. And then Real Madrid against Alaves it is typically what we have seen from Real Madrid, uh, especially over the last uh, four games or so. Nothing spectacular. Sergio Ramos even on the bench. However, we get a penalty and this time, yeah, it probably was, was one. It was more about the low location than the actual foul, although there's some... Uh, did he really touch it? But I think the penalty for once goes okay. Uh, Monsema may makes it. Real Madrid it doesn't need to do much. They just need to control the game. And then um, they thought that Benzema uh, was offside. No, he was not. Asensio also, also not 2 0. And that's the game. And Real Madrid doesn't even need to exert themselves to get another win. And I really think this is more or less the championship for them, although the 538 odds are much, much closer there. But I really don't see where it's going. Um, we have Real Madrid, four points clear of Barcelona, three points to uh, three games to go. Atletico Madrid um, has secured the Champions League spot more or less as the Sevilla, as a just outside chance for Villarreal. Um, and on the bottom, I think it's the only other really interesting, I mean, we can see Villarreal, Getafe, Real Sociedad. I mean, the last Europa League spot which the Granada has, has a chance there. I don't think Bilbao will get in there. And I think that bottom three will be the bottom three, although Alaves maybe looks a little bit in endangered if you just look at the table, but it's still a three-point cushion. That might be just enough. Then uh, to start the uh, next round, round uh, 36, Osasuna in their bull run jerseys, I call them. I'm not sure, but it looked like uh, the white with the cloth here. I think it looked like an, uh, that they wanted it to do the bull run, which actually forced Celta into a dark red jersey. And when I started watching that game for a little bit, 
I thought Celt is also Sun. I was completely messed up with that one. Um, actually, I saw it a little bit. I always had the feeling that Celta was better, and it turns out uh, that Celta actually took the lead um, through Santi Mina with a nice Aspas assist. Wonderful uh, pass into in, into the box. That at least at first was thought to be offside. No, was not. Uh, but Enrique gets a quick equalizer. But um, still, in the first half, Vigo was the better team. But uh, as the team game went on, Sasuna so got a little bit more the upper hand. Where Celta Vigo got a little bit more and more and more passive, and that would pay because uh, uh, Jose gets a very late winner in stoppage time and one that could prove costly for Celta although we'll see in the table a little bit later how the situation turns out to be. Then I watched a good portion of Valladolid against Barcelona. Um, I was a little bit surprised that Barcelona played in the yellow but then in, in the end it made sense. Um, I think at first half was more or less all Barcelona. I mean, it was not all that great, but you know, when they took the lead through Vidal after a nice messy assist, Vidal actually taking the extra uh, through the uh, um, the, bar, uh, the uprights to go into the net. It seemed like a foregone conclusion that Barcelona is gonna win this e e easily. And if Griezmann would have pulled it away a little bit later instead of letting the ball going through his legs, I think no one would have even doubted that this it was a clear win. But the uh, longer the game went on, the more wide the lead got in it. And in the end, Ter Stegen had to make a, quite a few saves to keep Barcelona uh, in the game and uh, be the winner of this game. It was again a ra rather lackluster performance have this grey Barca jersey and that's how Barca is playing at the moment. At least Real Madrid will not be champions this round. That's what this win secured. And then a rather interesting win was also between Atletico Madrid and Real Betis uh, because Atletico Madrid scored three goals, the first two, all of which were reviewed by VAR. Uh, the first one was I think ruled off for an offside. Uh, that was a handball from Correa. Uh, in the end, in the build-up, yeah, if you want to watch, uh, if you want to tell me to talk about hand, handful, watch my series, I'll review the next one that's coming up. Uh, then Morata was by a fraction of side. Again, I hate this rule, let it be going on, going on, da, da, da. I think give the referee a view and then, yeah, whatever. Uh, Hermoso of uh, Atletico actually gets a set of a rather dangerous challenge. I'm not sure if it was all that red, but you know. They decided it was. And then in 74th, Diego Costa scores a goal. It's a header that goes on his shoulder, upper arm. You don't really see it and into the net. And there was a high... I thought it might be taken out as well, but that stood and Atletico gets the win. Now for the four uh, games on Sunday. I Honestly, I didn't see too much. I saw the highlights of the last two. But Espanyol uh, continues losing and, you know, they are already down against Eibar and uh, this basically secures Eibar the spot up there. They, there was, they took the lead uh, penalty from Esposito in the 25th. Esposito actually missed the penalty and then scored on the rebound in the 36th or uh, shortly thereafter uh, to make it 2-0 uh, for Eibar. Um, probably an entertaining game that I now a little bit regret not watching the highlights, um, was between Levante and Atletico Bilbao, where uh, Bilbao actually had a 2 0 halftime lead. Garcia in the uh, fourth and then uh, and also in the stoppage time of the first half scores the two goals. Uh, and Bardi can put one back for Levante. Levante, of course, playing in this teeny tiny stadium near Benidorm, uh, which is kind of in interesting. Already cu uh, curious to see Real Madrid play in such a small stadium. But uh, the Valencia against Leganes and Sevilla against Mallorca had a lot of implications for European spots as well as for re relegation. And Leganes against Valencia was a really weird game where at first I has to say uh, Leganes was well organized, um, got a penalty and uh, stepped up and took the lead through, I think it's uh, Raul Perez uh, gave them the lead. Um, however, the more the game went on, the more Valencia seemed kind of angry and was attacking. Um, didn't help that uh, Leganes player was sent off a straight red card after a VAR review. 
And then they get a penalty in the 60th. Pretty clear one. Uh, Dani Parejo's effort is saved by the goal. Goalkeeper and by saved, I mean the goalkeeper caught the ball. That was really uh, well, um, you know, there was really some thunder behind that shot. But yeah, Leganes hangs on to that win. And maybe, maybe that's the faintest of hopes that they might survive, um, dependent also on the results Monday and going thereafter. Mallorca also thought that they have some um, hope, but Sevilla, who I'm wearing here, uh, didn't really. Yes, they were a little bit dangerous at the, at the beginning, but Sevilla controlled the game most of the time. Took a penalty from Ocampos to take the lead uh, for um, Sevilla. And then, you know, I think there was one, uh, Budimir had a really good chance, but was rule, ruled out. Um, in the end, and the city makes it 2-0 and it could have been probably higher. Uh, Sevilla dominated that one and more or less secures their spot in next year's Champions League. So, to finish off the La Liga weekend and this video, we had three games Monday evening and um, Alaves against Getafe goalless was not the big one, but I think almost the most impactful result of the three we had. It was Villarreal's loss at home to Real Sociedad. That um, honestly came a little bit unexpected, um, but it had huge implications in the table, as we'll see, because now the top four are set. Um, it also keeps the Europa League spots a little bit more open. So um, quite a big one. And it actually uh, was mostly, again, Real Sociedad, who for once can get the win. They take a very late um, lead. Um, after Odegaard's assist, Vian Jose makes it 1 0 uh, in the 61st after a corner. And then uh, Diego Llorente after Oyar Sabal assist in the 75th makes it 2 0. And it, it seemed actually quiet that it's now going, uh, it's uh, decided. But I always feel that 2 0 is a day dangerously because you just need to get a goal back. And that's exactly what happened. Cathala puts one back. They cannot really get a bigger chance to uh, move back then. And so Real Sociedad really hangs on to a big victory for them. And then in the evening, uh, Real Madrid left no doubt about who is going for the championship and not. I have to say, I really dislike those mint green jerseys that they're playing all the time. They have such a beautiful navy jersey that I barely have seen this season. Of course, they could wear a black jersey like this one too. Uh, Mondi in the 10th minute from an acute angle uh, slams it into the roof of the net. Yeah, goalkeeper could do a little bit better there. But on the other side, uh, it came rather unexpected. And then after Modric sees Bonzema uh, puts one in and it was pure domination around Madrid in the first half. I think uh, this was one time where they actually showed that they are a good team. Uh, and not just getting lucky 1-0 wins. I mean, lucky, they were always a good team, uh, but, you know, their flair or whatever was missing. Changed a little bit in the second half because just five minutes in, Machis pulls one back for Granada, who then have a few chances, uh, although Isco had a, a good shot, as a good effort as well. The biggest came, I think, in the 80, 85th minute when Ramos cleared a shot off the line, but Real Madrid hangs on and so... In the table, Real Madrid just needs one more win and they are champions. Uh, so it's more or less a done deal. 95% chance that Real Madrid will win La Liga. Barcelona behind and as we said, the and Sevilla are now all for sure in the Champions League. Um, now for the Europa League spots, Villarreal, uh, Getafe, Sociedad and Probably Bilbao uh, play out those last few games and I really don't know what is going to happen with the uh, Spanish Cup final because that would give a fixed spot uh, to the winner which will be either Real Sociedad or Athletic Bilbao. So have to see about that. I, Despite them only a point behind, I don't think Valencia will get into that conversation. And on the bottom, uh, honestly, Real Valladolid are safe, uh, Eibar are, are safe now. But uh, Alaves, 
Mit der 0-0 against Getafe, uh, only 0-0 against against Getafe, they are still in danger. Leganes is only four points behind, but they have a pretty uh, tough program, as we'll see. Mallorca probably has a better chance of making it out of there. Slightly better, it still looks all set for Leganes and Mallorca. So let's look at the remaining program. And we have the last week, in a week from now, we know everything in La Liga. Thursday evening is the first round where um, is the second to last round and we see Real Madrid against Villarreal this is where they can already put uh, uh, secure the championship at home um, when we look now um, Rasazad has to play Sevilla so that might be a, a tough one Bilbao against Leganes so uh, this is the first tough game for Leganes and Bilbao also basically needs that win to stay in European contention, um, Alaves away to uh, Betis, I could see them lose there and Mallorca could get a win against Granada and then it's only a point. In the last round, and I just want to put it in there, uh, we have Alaves play at home to Barcelona, which is again Alaves. Uh, Betis, I can see them lose, I, Barcelona, I can see them lose, so Alaves is a little bit on shaky grounds. And then uh, Real Sociedad plays at uh, uh, Atletico Madrid, so Real Sociedad's final program is all not that easy. Uh, whereas Bilbao plays at Granada, so uh, that could be go in there. Um, Itafe at Levante, Mallorca could get a win uh, also soon. So I mean, Mallorca needs to win twice, that's clear, and Alaves uh, needs to get at least uh, two points, I would say. Then they're safe. Uh, uh, there's a nice last day game between Sevilla and Valencia. And to finish off this video, we look at the results from Portugal over the past week, uh, where Porto inches closer with a 3 1 win over Tondela, and then Benfica dropping more points uh, against Famalicao, uh, making it only 1 1. Sporting getting a 1 0 vi uh, uh, win over Santa Clara. Braga seemingly getting rid of all their frustrations 5 1 over. Passos de Ferreira and with that with Benfica dropping more points Porto more or less is champion I mean there is just academic chance it's now an eight point lead um, I think a point for Benfica uh, for Porto in the next round is already enough to secure the championship so uh, looks rather safe their family cow might not might might not make it into the uh, Europa League as a fight with Rio Ave Sporting and Braga have secured that one um, and yeah also on the bottom it is still open with Tondela uh, set to ball in Portimonense kind of uh, in the mix for them in Belenenses is not uh, out there so let's see the next um, match day which is played from Monday so when you watch this the, the first two matches have already been played um, of course Benfica does, does win against Guimarães, which is kind of a good matchup within Port Portugal. They crown Porto champions, and if not, then uh, Porto against Sporting, one of the classic top three matchups, could seal seal the deal. So even if there's nothing riding it, I think Porto against Sporting is always uh, a prestigious um, matchup. And then since we will go over the weekend until the next round, uh, the second to last round um, on the there's nothing really that I see on the weekend Monday. It is then Porto and Benfica play next Monday and next uh, Tuesday respectively, at which time I think everything is already decided. Well, that was it for uh, this entire Iberian week. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists with interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.